So we have a second. Uh, any discussion on approving the agenda? There being none, uh, all in favor? Those opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to ask everyone for a moment of silence uh, and respect and observation of 9-11. Thank you. Mayor's report. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Mike and, and Jody and Kenneth are ready to talk about a lot of things, but I think uh, just some recent figures that kind of give us some position on where we got to go with balancing things and, uh, um, and a couple of things that just happened with regard to sports betting. And, and you know, MGM has an AAFL uh, taking a big position on for spring football. So as we talk about gaming, uh, you know, we can do it in the middle of this thing, but um, as well as the, the month we've just experienced with GGR and at least meeting our, our 11 or 17.5 numbers. Uh, in the next three months, I think, you know, we'll have business that we didn't have in the, in the future within October, November, December, and January when playoffs hit. So, and then a few months later, we'll have uh, March Madness. And uh, so there are some opportunities to stretch this a little bit, and just my gut feel, and it's purely a gut feel, like we did when we when we knocked at the, you know, the impact of, uh, of some competition across that bay. Uh, I think we just in initially put uh, a one million. It made it 18.5, which put us in the position before Scarlet Pearl, and literally I think we can stretch that. Uh, not all gaming, but. Uh, gaming as well as uh, sales tax. So I think you could probably got 250,000 more to, to push that way. And uh, there's some, like I said, factors that are gonna happen, some things that we'll see first in the first quarter. So there may be some, you know, some margin there, at least in my opinion. So that kind of concludes my report. We'll talk, uh, we've had, I think Nathan had a good meeting last night. Uh, Councilman Tisdale was there and we talked some you know impressions about what we need as a you know uh, public safety and and services and that sort of thing. So I would consider uh, very you know uh, pay real attention to what we need to do in uh, making these numbers work. And that concludes my report. Thank you. I'm going to hand these out. This is fresh off the press. This is the Thank you, Mike. We'll review it in just a second, uh, but let's go ahead and get the council reports uh, uh, done. So uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Lawrence. I know none of y'all, not too many of y'all was around in 2001. We just got elected, and the first thing happened was 9 11. So we were all shocked. What are we doing? We bombing New York, hitting the towers, and stuff like that. And it was a difficult, difficult time. And it's hard to believe it's been that long for us. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Nathan Barrett, uh, I think, ran it in record time. Record time. He, 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 no, he ran it faster than any other uh, city councilman in the yeah, history of Biloxi has run it. Really, well, just made how things like that happen. Yep. And now uh, we have the Chuck in the playoffs, so that's going to help. Uh, and at least put the first two games that will come back and play possibly three here. And they, you know, have a nice crowd. I put the championship in the thing, so that's, that's a good thing. Thank you. Mr. Gein. Uh, just this weekend, uh, Saturday, um, we're going to be having the Civil Liberties Banquet, and anyone who's available to come on out to Frank Wood Center at 6 o'clock, honoring some of the past councilmen of Wood. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Newman. Yeah, Mr. Barrett. Um, just want to thank everyone for coming out last night to our ward meeting. Remind everyone that we have um, that movie night, Friday night, at Old Market Elementary. This was a cool weekend in Biloxi. Um, we had Shuckers game, Seafood Festival, and the 9-11 run all in this area, three very big events. And so it'd be nice to see something like that going on every weekend, just this whole peninsula area. You know, but uh, it's really cool to have those three events all at the same time going on in Biloxi. So that's all. Thank you, Mr. Deming. 
the only thing I would like to add is something to that moment of silence. September 11th will always be a day that we remember in America because of the attack on our soil here, but there's, there's another attack bearing down on our soil in the Carolinas right now. So if we could add those people to our prayers as well, I'd appreciate that. Good point. Mr. Tisdale. A uh, couple of things. Who plans to go to the Council of uh, Government uh, meeting? I'll be there. I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> going to have great food. They're going to have uh, two legislators that committed to give a legislative update. There may be more. When that bar? Mayor going? Or when, when is it, Paul? I said it's the 19th. Let me check real so, quick. I thought we, we were going to requesting some information from them regarding these uh, invoices that we get from them and whether I think you just mimic that mm -hmm. pay your own uh, way kind of it, yeah it's 600 bucks a year and apparently they had never invoiced us or if we did we ignored it for a couple of years and I don't think it's in the budget this year if I remember correctly so we won't be a member yeah. well, Mac, my reign of terror will be coming to an end here in September but you you can always propose a budget amendment later on if, if we yeah, have newfound yeah. money. Hang on, let me find that date. I want to say it's, to, it's tomorrow at the convention center. So I'm going to be there. I'll be there representing mm -hmm. Biloxi. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Mr. Barrett ha held his first, I think, ward meeting last night. He did a, did a good job. And for everybody present, it was their first ward meeting, too out in Ward 7, and every, everybody did a, a nice job, and the mayor was there, and several of the department heads, so you did a nice job, Mr. Barry. Concludes my report. Okay, thank you. And I just want to echo the Tunnels to Towers uh, event. Uh, it's grown into quite an event, and uh, we had, uh, I mean, many runners that ran and walked the uh, 5K run, and then the uh, towers, uh, it, uh, to see those firemen, and other concerned people that are running it, the firemen in full gear, some of them, running it five times those stairs at, at Margaritaville uh, is inspiring. There were pictures that we hung of, of the fallen heroes, and there were broadcast, the actual radio broadcast going on during the 9-11 event in the towers that was, I mean, had people in tears, but it, it, it kind of made us feel, you know, what freedom is all about. And it was very emotional, uh, very inspiring, and my hat's off to everyone who participated and organized and supported that event. So it was really, really, really cool. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, we'll move on to the public agenda and citizen comments. Uh, we have 45 minutes allotted for this segment. Uh, if you have anything that you want to speak about, raise your hand to be recognized, and then you can uh, approach the uh, the room uh, up at the front, state your name and address clearly for the record, and you can uh, begin speaking on any topic. So, does anyone uh, wish to speak? Mr. Ginzer? No, you need to speak into it. It's being recorded. My name is Frank Ginzer. I'm a local architect. And um, I was at, attended last week the waterfront workshop. And while I didn't speak at that workshop, I listened for, for two days. And I tell you, I was really impressed. I'd like to congratulate the mayor for having the foresight to put on a workshop that you can hear from citizens as well as from experts across the country. Uh, we saw a lot of examples across the country of different uses that a waterfront can be turned into uh, and especially uh, going to the water's edge the boardwalk i took from it is phase one of an important master plan that the city of biloxi needs to consider as the as our waterfront is developed you don't want to have haphazard development but you want to have a controlled uh, development and like I said, I believe that the boardwalk is that f is phase one of a master plan. So again, I'd just like to congratulate the mayor for doing this. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
My name is John Kemp. Um, I live at 178 Hannibal Court. Um, just here to say thank you to the mayor, uh, to the council people, um, to all the directors of each department, uh, particularly Chief Miller, um, for uh, making sure a park that's directly in front of my house stays well policed. The Department of Recreations keeps it clean, keeps the grass cut. Um, just a quick mention on this budget, on these budget talks. Uh, this is a beautiful city. Um, the fact that we're surviving three triple whammies, I mean a triple whammy from you know, a hurricane of, um, you know, financial crisis and an oil spill. The fact that we're sitting in still one of the, to me, the, the most beautiful city in this country is, is amazing. Um, I have to say, though, when we, when we talk in these budget talks, please keep in mind of a little piece of my heart where I got my first shrimp po' boy and box root beer at, and that's something that I call the, um, the main and Division Street Corridor. Uh, it's, it's sort of disappearing a little bit. I got friends all over the planet that would like to move home. They're from that area. And so as we talk about the beautification of this beautiful city, uh, keep in mind that my agenda is really based on uh, hopefully one day my sons and uh, my daughter can att attend one community center in East Biloxi. Um, I had four growing up, the East Biloxi Community Center, Pringles Gymnasium, O'Hanlon, the Boys and Girls Club. These were all free places. You know, the, the Croc Center is beautiful. They do great work. But those children all can't afford to go in it. And it's a little sad, but I understand you got big fish you're frying, you know. Um, Mayor Fofo, I hope I live to see, instead of Division Street, I hope I come off that bridge and see Fofo Boulevard, <laughs> okay? And I, I really appreciate the work you're doing. And um, Mayor Blessy, <laughs> bless his heart, I don't know if he's here today, uh, but the fact that he still has his foot in the pond and y'all are listening to some of the things he talks about is, is really a blessing for us all. And that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? All right, uh, citizen comments is closed, and we'll move on to the policy agenda. Terry, if you'd read it into the record. Meeting is to discuss the municipal budget, October 1st, 2018, ending September 30th, 2019. Thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, say a couple words, and I appreciate the mayor's comments on the on the revenues uh, inching them up a little bit. Um, I, I agree with him somewhat. I think it it, it possibly could be higher, uh, but we have to get that part right as we move forward to adopt this uh, budget next Friday. And I think we need to take a really good scrub uh, today. And I'm I'm prepared to stay here as long as we can. If we need a recess uh, to tomorrow or the next day or the following day until Friday to get it right, I'm prepared to do that. If the council, uh, if it's the council's will, um, so we'll open it up. Uh, I'd like to open it up on the thoughts of each council member on the revenue side. Uh, you heard the mayor mention that maybe we can increase it another 250,000. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts or ideas on that? Sure. Well, those, those game numbers just came in. As of yesterday, the last sheet that you had was missing September. So if you look at uh, September actual versus September budget, you'll notice it was a substantial bump, which meant that year-to-date actual versus year-to-date budget, is we've, we've cleared the hurdle, and we're well above the hurdle now. It represents all the businesses in about three weeks of, of uh, you know, gaming. So that's... that's it's indicative of, of it's our it's our best guess. It's indicative of a combination of some some uh, uh, people that stayed over for you know the blues, plus the beginnings of sports betting. Well, I saw somewhere um, where at the, at the close of July, mm -hmm. it seemed like fourteen million dollars nine nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was it's, you know, that so was that the was nine million? No, it was no. Okay, but that was. The number you're seeing there is, a, 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 the number that, I'm, that I'd point out to you is that's very important, is that what's going into our general fund. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, the, bottom, yeah. that's the bottom line. That's the actual, that's the number you see. It's $17,755,741 against a budget of $17.5 million. So, so you can see we, we, beat, we beat about a yeah, quarter million dollars over the budget for the year. So if it affects us that much, You know, I think the first three months of, the, of this fiscal, of the you know, 19th fiscal, will tell us a, a big tale. I mean, because you're going to get, you know, 
the, the thrust of gaming, at least for this area, of the sports betting, I mean, will be October, November, December, and January. The NFL just started. Yeah, NFL just started. We have college football yeah. season. And then basically through but March, NBA. we're going to have solid, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you're going to have basketball in March, too. Yeah, so and I mean, the NBA goes until May, but your, your, so, your real betting is football and then March Madness. And so we have it through March. So basically six months out the year is your heaviest game as far as sports betting goes. Um, now, base, I don't think anybody yeah, bets on baseball. World Series, the World Series in <laughs> October will be, you know. That'll be, that'll be coming, but also. Uh, yeah, but is it know, huge here, though? I want to point out, too, and, and, and I, want to, I want to underscore this. In this budget, October, when we hit cruising the coast, those numbers were deflated last year because of Hurricane Nate. And I, I think that's going to be another extra bump when we get a full, you know, experience and, and the full effect of uh, cruising the coast and all those visitors that left early last year because of Nate. Can I add to that? Yeah, I, sure. I think yeah, that anything. Not just that. We're seeing national trends up in the economy, mm -hmm. um, job rates. Mm -hmm. So disposable income has been increasing. That's why we're seeing trends up in gaming. That's the only place you can find that kind of spending is disposable income. But we're going to have retail like like Mike noted in here, we have more people coming to the area, more businesses opening. And I think these numbers that Mike's presented are actually very cons very conservative when you look at the national trend in other locations and the impact on budgets in cities similar to our size. Mm -hmm. So I agree with these numbers. I think it's better to be safe than sorry. I wouldn't put too big a numbers in there. But right. I mean, that's where well, okay, excuse me, I didn't mean to uh, no, jump in, but uh, these are different kind of folks visiting too. So I mean, it's a different set of customers. Right. So. And we don't know true impact more about them coming more over and over again and what, what they'll be spending, what they'll be doing. But I think, you know, uh, their margin, we don't want to sandbag one way or the other. But you know, it's just a guess. So, you know, guess on, uh, on a, a conservative side that would uh, certainly we want to meet our numbers. <coughs> uh, it, and we felt with or without sports betting that our, our, our trend was up anyhow. So we were recovering from about two years ago. You know, again, that we're about 980 something. Uh, $1,000 is what the impact pretty much of, the, of the, the gross gaming revenue that Scarlet Pearl took away from our spots. So uh, I'm comfortable with, with adding 250 in, in gaming as well as sales tax, because a lot of it will be sales tax. What the mayor is saying, suggesting is if you look at your revenue statement, um, the revenue statement showed 18.5 for the year, which is a $1 million increase over the previous year. So he's saying 18750 right now. That's the number that's on the table. I'm going to have to go back, Mike, to the front page and come on the statement. You have in there, you have five million. This is from the point of view of the And it says high resolution. We had that by 45 million when we did 50 million. Where did you get that five million from? Well, we didn't get it this year. That's an old column, and I hid that column in the in the version that you have now, because I didn't want to answer that question. I redid this, the combined fund statement. This is it's, it's, it's in the book. But it's, he's talking about he's, he's talking about this five million that's sitting over here. Yeah, which is from a previous year and is not really in play this year. I got so many papers, I don't even know what.
other, other columns out. Okay. I'm just going to put new on this one instead of digging for the other one. <coughs> George asked this question when Councilman Lawrence asked this question the other day, and we couldn't adequately answer it. I just redid those columns, right, so that we wouldn't have to talk about it. I kind of like to stay on revenue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let, let, we got to get this revenue straight because I got some other comments after we agree to the operational yeah, revenue. It is. You're right. So. 250. I uh, hear you. You're comfortable with 250, uh, Mr. Tisdale. Did you have any comments on the revenue part? Yeah, what we were originally I'm comfortable with 250. I think we're going to get 350. I mean, I just feel correct on gaming. No, no, growth in sports book. Growth on me. We anticipated a growth. Was trajectory. Oh, that, that's that's growth plus stuff. Even with based on the office, not a trend, but it looks like the activity a little more than that. Million two fifty. Answer. I I still think October is going to bump it a little bit more if we're not accounting for that. And what's that? What's that? No. Hopefully we don't. You're right. But does any is anybody wanting to move it a little bit above two fifty, or is two fifty the number right now? Okay. Y'all agree? Is that a consensus I feel very with everyone? With I think it'll. Exceed Can I just that, have a straw I vote? Everybody want to keep the the increase at two fifty? Can I just have a straw vote? Can I call yeah. for a straw vote? Yeah. All in favor of two fifty? Anyone opposed with that? All right, two fifty is the number. We'll. Uh, that's our revenue number. And the the other. So that's going to be two fifty on gaming. It's gaming. Or, yeah. Right. 250 on gaming is where you're going to raise it at? Yes, yeah, so okay. we're looking at property tax and sales revenue. We're actually getting a 1.2. Sales tax would be the other one you want to so kick forward. You know, where are we right very second? We're going to meet our number uh, with uh, sales, uh, sales tax 12 million plus or minus. You may be able to squeeze 50,000 more out of that way and being conservative about new visitors. Well, let's go up 50,000. I would agree with that. I think we, sh we are showing these trends. And this, and this may help, uh, Councilman. This is the sales tax numbers as of today. And this is why Mike sent us this email. And so he's got it here. He may be able to explain this more thoroughly, but he's got sales tax revenue of 300. It, a total increase of a million, which com is composed of three and a half for gaming, sales tax, as of now. three and a half for property tax, and three for sales tax. But, but uh, my question, uh, Mr. Leonard, was there any consideration adjustment for the cruise on the coast event at all? He had that. Wait a minute, I'm asking. No, Let me no, ask a question. It's in the, it's in the email, though. That's all right. I'm but he, he said there's none. No, there was sir. no adjustment for that. The, the only adjustment in sales tax has been the 100000 that this council chose to uh, increase during our first workshop. It was originally at you, the sheet I just handed out shows you the 12 4 is the number for this year. We're sitting at, uh, if, 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 if we get the same result in September as we did last year, we'll, we'll be right at the 12-4. So we put 12-5 in. This, this council wanted to do 12-5. So that's where we sit right now is a $100,000 increase over year over year. That's where it sits right now, unless you want to do different. I, the mayor suggested maybe another 50. I would agree with that for because of the October not being uh, accounted for. I would propose that. This is sales tax? Yep. Sales tax. And keep in mind, this so is right our now, budget. If we find that revenues aren't coming five, in. Well, I think you had 12.5 going into it. 12.5. You had 50,000. My right? original budget had 12.4. is what your original budget was. So we're actually adding 110 to what you originally had budgeted then. Okay. Well, I, had, I thought it was 12.4 yeah. when we went to 12.5. This, this, what I have here in front of me says 12.440. Okay. And so yeah. we're, we're adding 110 to mm -hmm. that total. Right. So our, we'll be at twelve five fifty. Yeah. Okay. Twelve five fifty, Mike. Okay. So property taxes. Do you anybody want to speak to property taxes? Thank you. 
Well, you know, things are not this year, but in, in futures, you know, you're supposed to reappraise every four years. Okay, so we're in the mid, you know, it's coming up two, three years down the road, but, you know, give some basis. You know, if you get a million dollar permit, does that necessarily mean, you know, if you're going to put a million dollars in a piece of property, does that mean it's going to be on the, on the tax roll? Not necessarily. We need to make an effort of real market value that we can project our, our you know, ad valorem taxes. So, and not only that, uh, you know, some of the personal property stuff. So, not, you know, but reappraisal, you know, in, in every four years. When is that next? I, I think it's in 20. 2020? 20. But, but, you know, basically what has been done in the past, they just kick it up by 5%. You but really need to take a look at what the value my, is. My, qu my question is, how is our, our um, property taxes staying level when we're adding tons of new, uh, new, new homes to the, to the books? I just, I don't understand that. Well, I, and I'm just speaking from our ward, we got tremendous I mean, we ha we've, since I've been in office, we've put, I mean, we've got nine new subdivisions well, you know, going you, in. Once I mean, you put it online, you get your certificate of occupancy. So you got another whole year before this stuff goes on, on to be appraised in the November time frame that's you know coming up right now. Things that happened two years ago are being billed this year for seventeen. I mean, we're issuing we're issuing like a five certificates of occupancy every week for new single family houses, and then we're issuing permits like we're reviewing another set of plans right now. I mean, just, I, I know we have a lot of construction going on, but I mean, we have a lot of, just in my ward of new subdivisions that are sold out full. I mean, Rock Creek, you got um, Nature's Trail, you got Mill Creek Crossing, and that, I mean, it's just three, but I mean, there's many more. We, and, we got nearly 200 homes that have been built in the last year in, in my ward. I, and and I'm not saying, I mean, it might stay level. I just don't understand how it would stay level with as many homes, unless people are just abandoning homes well, and not selling them to somebody little, else little, and little, moving to Ward 7. Across the county, it's a 2% bump, okay? 2%. I mean, that's the assessor and the collector kind of situation. 2% is what we think we build. Did we uplift it at 2%? For no, we kept, it, we kept it the same. We kept it the same. But, I mean, literally, uh, but they were really, from tax assessor, it, it was a 2% raise in, in, you know, assessed valuation. Right, so a 2% raise in assessed valuation plus new but that's what you apply to the you know to the mill I mean, yeah, we, we, so i mean the question is you know how is it derived and you know, how current it is it is, is the question yet you know for for 2019 that we're going to they're going to send out that we're going to collect 18. And they do by February or whatever, right? So we have the best of people. There's really not much change in what we have. So all this new build may catch up like everybody. Yeah, so, so we're next, just, okay, that, and that's understandable. Down the road. You finish something, you got a year, it depends on when, when it is. If you finish in January, you got two years before you, you, you start to get a bill. Well, there's other components to the total package. You know, you've got, uh, you've got the inventory and everything, the businesses paying on. And those went down. The depreciation, the, those kinds of things are depreciable too. Yeah. That's why there's a volatility there. So maybe in the next year to two, we'll see a little boom because of uh, of it all coming around. Yeah. Okay. Then again, you know, uh, uh, all these things coming on board, and if you got a three hundred thousand dollar house, you would expect that that you know the value is going to be market value or something close to it, not half of it. So I mean, that's some of the things we've got to look at. You know, uh, California does some, a lot of things bad, but they do some things too that the value that you're taxed on is based on a real sale, not somebody's assessment. So, Mr. McEwen, let me ask you something. So, the comment was made that we had a 2% increase, but it was countered by a, the depreciation on businesses. That number was a 2% in the depreci total depreciation to yeah. offset the 2% increase in the, in the property. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I get but, it. But that total that, that, valuation for that inventory and those kinds of things are not nearly dollarization. Is, you know, you can offset that the depreciable stuff. Uh, you know, you want that abalone to uh, That explains to it. That explains it a little bit more clearly, you know. So I, I can understand that. Equity gain, so there's nothing left to me. Depreciation, so you have to gain through the 
Well, you'll, you'll, yeah, look yeah. at your tag. If you buy a new car, look at your tag, and you see what happens between one and, and the second year. You know, the, the decrease is pretty much automatic. And, and to go further with that, so you actually got a document from the county saying this is what we're billing. This is what we're billing for commercial and, and for no, personal you, property. Your valuation for tax district. But what's our best guess? Okay. All right. Okay. I'm I'm satisfied with that. I So, Mr. Leonard, what is our new number for revenue, total revenue? Just yeah, the uh, 57, six, we, we're yeah, added, we, made, we added 300,000 uh, 300, to this, so it's 57, 976, 511. And what that does to your combined fund sheet, the, the big sheet, is that bottom line, which the bottom line on general fund, which shows 4 million 120, 292 goes to 4 million 420 292 okay. with the on this uh, front page we got 2.2 million to the economic development and to me I think that to be removed we got 2.2 million to go to cash talk to you come on where's that at? Uh, Thirteen. 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 Thirte
if, if you were, had the chance to do what, what I do and go look over Ken's shoulder just about every day, you'd be amazed at how the that cash balance changes. It's like a sine wave like this. So it's kind of a guess, but the guess gets better and better as we get within weeks of the end. And right now, even though it says six million as, the, as our conservative estimate of the starting fund balance, what do you think it's gonna be, Ken? All right, and you won't know that till probably you November it, you know of, of that 15th. Right. But, what, but let me tell you what we've done, six meetings. We've estimated four and three and five and six and all this, but since I've been mayor, each year, that cash balance, as we guessed here in July, ending with September, has always been six million. Okay, wait, let me, let me finish. Now, what I want to ask Ken to do, you know, our bet together is that we have a balanced budget and, and that, you know, our cash position increases. And what I want to do that you don't have, and I don't know if you understand retained earnings, you know, each year we got a bet that we're going to make, you know, P&L, that we're going to outspend, you know, or the, the, ex, the expenses won't outspend the revenues. And I want an entry from each year in that year-to-day gains learning in what we did 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 and 19. When you have to say, hey, we, we run a, a tight ship, so next year, we got to do some investment or we going to think so you know that it's not something smoke and mirrors that we're doing. What do you want to do in, in business when you, you know, when you have an opportunity and you've got some, some reserve and the reserve is reflected in not only cash, but your fund balance. That's what I'm saying. I want this entry. So it's apparent to everyone. Hey, we, we made a million here. We made 1.2 million here. We made 750,000 here and next year we'll, we'll do something. That'll be reflected in the 2019, so I want that delineated from an accounting standpoint so all of us know, hey, look at the balance sheet and you see, we've been making money year after year after year. All I'm you saying is you got 2.2 million, you sit there and just come out and say, I heard him say last week, tough times, times confusing, and when it goes back and forth. I'm not trying to do anything with the money, I'm just putting it in two. And it's the same things. You, it's the same. So what? So you, listen to me, okay? What, what you're going to do to transfer that money is if you leave a do to do from, and that fund balance in the 13 fund will be 4.4 million, like it needs to be. Wait, but let, let me say this exercise is so for one reason is so you can reduce that use of cash to balance this budget. If you want to balance this budget by the cash you have in this economic balance, that's going to just like everything else. Other revenue sources. That's a revenue source, even though it's just a do to do from it's, it's, it's still company. encumbered to make sure that we have it uh, allocated to the economic revolving fund. That's right. Still allocated, even though we're shifting it over to the general fund. Correct? To balance your to balance the budget. Reducing the number of one in one column. But you can still do whatever you want to do with it as long as you got it. Is it? So you're talking about putting it, putting it in you know, any other sources, right here, put it right, here, here, put right there, there. Trade, do to do from here, take it out yeah. here, put it there, and that number, what is that right there? 1.4? This is what, minus 1.8. Okay, right now. then that, then that then you're right. Right. Then we go back to 6. No, I agree with the mayor. I mean, you know, it, it is split in hairs. I mean, it's, it's, it was set up, you know, for this use for business, mm -hmm. for when we needed it to do do to do from us, okay? And the only thing that that would do is, is take it from our current fund, 13, our general fund, it would reduce the, that person number that y'all worried about, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. we, it, the way the mayor wants it, I mean, it's, 
it's accountability. Uh, the do to to do from is an accountability yeah, back to the yeah, revolving okay, fund. Okay, don't we close one last question? Mm -hmm. or I don't have the legislation in front of me. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, was there any choice for three years? We cannot mm -hmm. allow us to do it. It's two years, two from us. In order to get returns on investments, why did we set up economic development? Like, what was the what was the purpose to create legislation for a new account just for this what? instead of doing it out of our general fund? Is there a reason why we had to have a economic Well, it was set up to, to you know, first of all, we used that money to, uh, to pay down some uh, so Bonds. I, it should, but we, you know, the, the, as it was set up, well, it was to be uh, to be repaid back. So we had a perpetual 4.2 million dollars. Yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that. So I, I know we spent it on, and I know why we used it. But I'm asking, is there any requirement by the state to no. create a fund like this to do no. that? No. That's no. the only no. thing that's saying stuff. The money for the general fund. Yeah, yeah, certainly. You can't, it was you a, have a proof let, anyhow, but you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's almost like paying off a, a, a debt. If you want to use this figure to reduce that, that 1.2, or what, mm -hmm. what is that figure right there? Minus 1.876. So it, I would suggest whatever that figure is, zero, uh, create a due to, to the general fund so you have a balanced budget. Yeah, okay, so let me, let me make it, this comment on, uh, if, you, if you provide me a minute or two. It, it was created to have a revolving economic fund to say we're going to take this six million dollars and we're going to leverage it for different pro, uh, programs and when those programs are successful it pays it back and it continues to bring it back to a six million dollar balance and then we can reduce it for other products from from time to time you know for the betterment of capital projects uh, economic uh, you know trying to get businesses to come to Biloxi and invest those types of things. And that's what we've made decisions for. Uh, can it be in the regular general fund? It could, but at least it, it's our strategy saying we got this revolving account that we're going to maintain, you know, that we can go into at any time for those types of decisions. That's what it was for, bottom line. We can move it over here. I like the mayor's idea, the two from, to, to maintain the integrity of it for, for future benefits. Right. There was a legislative purpose for why we had to create that account, but I agree with you. We I don't need legislative purpose. That was an internal thing the yeah, city the city decided yeah, I, to do. I, I would suggest, too. I, I didn't mean no, to, no, you're good. But I would you know, be very comfortable with it. Again, if we wind up with $2 million in a, you know, a year to day gain a loss, and, and you know, without really putting us in, in trouble and things, they have to move it right back. So you'll have that, you know, uh, move it back as a do-to-do from when you. I would say, I agree, it would be a terrible purpose that we intended is fine. If there's no legislative purpose for why it has to be there, then it can come out anytime we need to come out for any purpose. We might as well leave it there and allow it to be accounted for that we can watch the money as we use it. I think it makes it easier and it's more transparent for us, you guys, and everyone else. We, had, we actually floated that out the day before, and when we set it up, we talked about just like a project that we had up for the business street, the grocery store, a way to repay it. Yeah, unless then it'd be a two. Yeah. We have a minus two. Or two, two hundred million. Yeah. You're not doing anything to put them in the state. You're not locked up. You're not doing anything good. You're just putting them in the I don't think it balances our budget, you know. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's just a pool of, of cash. It's not safe to be sit there when you're not using it. It's a, it's a shell game that makes, makes it look right. Yeah. I hate to interrupt, but just so everybody is following. In line, column nine is yeah. the economic development. At the top, you see the 2.2 million. What, what is being suggested is that that there's, that, that 2.2 million is, is, is goes into uh, column uh, sources so, down, down below. Um, transfers in. The transfers in. Or which one of those columns would it? Be? So, so that would be uh, other financing sources uses what? line what 54. So it would go under line 54, then, column seven, column seven, line 54. That's where that would end up. And really, you just and then you you go over here under uh, economic development and out to the side, and you put the transfer. Column. 
the minus. So let's say so hypothetically. That one, two would then end up being six point something or other. Let's just say hypothetically we did that, what George is saying. And then it came back and we, at the end of the fiscal year, we were at eight instead of six. Could we move that back for that two million? You don't two. really have to move it back as long as you left to do two new front. Right. So it's there regardless. So it's, it, asset. it's the it's same it's thing. Asset yeah. If, 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 if when it comes and we, we're not at the eight million, at that point we can move it if we wanted mm -hmm. to just to put it in a different box. But it's still there. It's accounted for. But, but the balance sheet for that economic that shows 4.2 million, period. It's not locked up for anything right now. We, we can try, we can bring it out at any time, George. We can take it out, like you said, us the council, I think, council controls the one. Right. right. We can take it out and do what you want with it. But the thing was set up as a, rather than the pay out box, with the key to the site. Which we did. And you're paying that back as, as, we, as if we would have paid the bond. As you pay the bond off, you're paying a portion of it back right. to us. Yeah. We're paying ourselves back. It's like you take a loan out of your 401k and you pay it back. You're paying yourself back when you take a loan from your 401k. Before we get too wrapped up tied up on this one issue. You want to take another straw? Let's see where everyone's at. So, so basically all it would do yeah. is make the bottom line look better. Right. Even. It really doesn't change anything. The 2.2 million is there regardless, right. but it it's just there. makes the bottom line look $2.2 .2 million better. It's not really, I have to judge. It's not 2.2 million. It's closer to 2 million. But you, your bottom line is closer to 1 point something million too. So I mean, you don't have to do 2.2 .2 million. Do whatever you want to make that, that, that big is zero. One, one concern that I have, and it's my perception or misperception, I suspect only, is that if we move it into the general fund, once it's in the general fund, based on our past history sometimes with resolutions, boom, it, it just goes away. Like I think it's less protected in the general fund than it is where it's at. Or are you going to buy a copy machine, yeah. or are you going to buy and, something and, else with and it? And let me tell you, you've done that similar thing, and, and we're in a position with uh, the construction account, okay? So you lent that, that, that uh, 30 fund a bunch of money, and we pay a little bit of it back this time, and that 1.75. So and it's been, you know, you used it from the general fund to, you know, to do uh, the infrastructure project, and you're paying a little bit of that back now because we, we're ahead of the ball game. So it's the same thing. I just feel like it's all going to do with it. What's the bottom line right now after the three hundred thousand use of things? What is it sitting now uh, with the three hundred thousand additional? Four four two zero. Oh. No, no. What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the, the difference line? on income and outgo for the use 18, of uh, nineteen? Yeah. This the, number. The one point something million used to be one point eight. Yeah. It'd be one point five. So one point five uh, or say one point six would actually flush that. We're so we're we're that. we're negative one point six at this point income to outgo. Hmm. Yep. What about, and I mentioned this to Mike the other day, what about like the, the library property? And I know that FEMA's involved somehow, but can, I know that she's interested in buying that property. I mean, that's $500,000 that we can knock off. And well, get there's that some restrictions on what we can do with that. FEMA and, and selling that thing. You know, we're, we're, they've got some investment in there and it's much easier to, to look at. And, you know, it, it's but, a, I mean, is it something that we can pursue? I, and, I wouldn't consider that right in this very second, just for, for the you know, 600 or maybe 300 that we can wind up netting. The, the sale of property is something that is probably going to be a positive for us through this year whether it be that property or the Magnolia Hotel or some other lots that we're looking at in city lots around. So we're going to have a sale of property that's not in this budget. Why not? For this year. So why is why it not? in the budget? Well, because we, we if, don't know what we're going to buy yet. Yeah, but if, we, if, it's, if it's almost certain or it's reasonably certain, why can't we put, why can't we budget that? Well, you know, mm -hmm. but why, you know, it's not, if it's new revenue, then, and we anticipate it, mm -hmm. we did that with the sale of uh, 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 the property on the beach. Uh, uh, in the tune of about a hundred something thousand, one hundred seventy thousand, I think, in 2015. I mean, you know, it's still not going to be that much. We're not going to net that much by selling it and then offsetting the, the rent that we get. You know, so I mean, there's, there's a little bit more consideration. Plus, 
you know, we're already kind of in, in a, a mode with FEMA and MEMA, mm. and we don't want to step on it. We, it, we wind up losing a million dollars on the Seafood Industry Museum after we, we played games and we put things on the second and third floor. We wind up selling for 1.2 million when we paid 2.2 something million. They told us this. I understand that, but I'm saying that that's the kind of that's the, you don't know what kind of you know, what what uh, you know you're betting on the dice when you when you do something that maybe has right. some questions. Can can we put a footnote into our budget saying we anticipate the probability of selling X amount in assets for this fiscal year? Could we include a footnote? I'm asking the question. Can we do that? Yeah, but yes, you don't know. We, 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 in, in my old Washington terms, that's like putting a wedge in your budget, you say. Just, just, it's a guess. I'm not saying put it in a column, but can we put it in some of the wording of other our sources, budget saying that we, we, that's not included in this budget, but reasonably anticipate $750,000 in sale of assets this fiscal year? Where would you put it? You talking about in the resolution? Would we put it in the resolution? Just a note. That, that it's not included in the budget. We, we historically have not done that, but we reasonably are, are expecting it to happen. Okay. I, I just think it's, I mean, if we reasonably expect the sale of assets, we ought to note it that it's, it's going to come. We reasonably expect it to come. Why don't we note it? Why not? If they want to do it. That's being transparent. Well, it says 1.8, but he says there's only about two up here yeah. now. So yep. if you move, you, you can put anything in a budget. You just want yeah. to make that zero. We can, we can say today we're going to have $75 million in the budget if we want to. That's yeah. not prudent and reasonable, but we can put anything in there. But I think the reasonable expectation of sale of assets, if we, if we felt strongly that way, it's, it's not unusual to include that in your budget. Mm -hmm. Just my opinion, but anyway. Um, Getting back to some of these numbers then, uh, what's the pleasure of the council on the economic revolving fund? So what you said is the balance of it? 1.8? Well, what is it? What, what is the number now? 1.5 with the consideration one, of 300,000? Right, 1.579. 1.579. Mm -hmm. it, it's right, right now it's in uh, column, yes. uh, column 7, column 7 general fund and line 73. What do you say? 1.8 right now, and we reduce it by 300. 1.8 something? Is that the sheet I just gave you? Okay, so that's what you need to make that. But after you consider. No, no, okay. All right. Whatever that is, 1.8, reduce that figure by 300,000 because that was the increase in real revenue. Next. Mm -hmm. And then move that, do to, move that uh, as a do to do from that to, to balance that. If it is really going to go in uh, up up there, it says 1.75 other revenue, you're going to increase that figure because it's going to be another revenue source. Let me ask you just a basic question for our accounting first. So that's 1.879. That is. Yeah. That is a, that's a reflective of cash, cash balance. balance, that's right. So look at, look at line 52, projected excess revenue over under expenses in our general fund. 3.9. That is what a modified pool is. We don't have real cash. No, it's real cash. What's the difference between the difference between revenue and, and expenses? Seventy-five, line seventy-five, right, right, last right, line right. on in green. Right. What is, what, what is everybody now? Is it one point? Everybody agrees that that now with the increase in the revenue, one point five seven. I have no problem. But it does fundamentally. It doesn't change anything other yeah. than we're moving it over to a column to balance a certain thing. So I have no problem with it. I think it's better the other way, but I have no problem uh, supporting it. I have no problem. Possible, you said mm -hmm. that we would have this and not touching the 2.2, we would actually have $500,000 saved. Mm -hmm. 
surplus if if we come in at eight and six. But what you said earlier. Oh, yeah. 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 And and exactly. historically, this exercise is a guess. And historically, the first year, 16, 1.275, and then last year was 651,000, right? Mm -hmm. So, but each year, that cash balance that you're looking for, 4.2 at that down there, is that mm -hmm. right? It's been 6 million. Okay. So, but we, we can't book that. I mean, you, this is what you're booking. Mm -hmm. we, we expect, yeah. So we got, how many more payrolls we got? About two million, we got three, three more, one more payroll? Mm -hmm. We're, we're actually not zeroing out, but we're moving a portion over to balance. That fund is still, uh, we, we've passed a resolution that we're going to maintain and pay that fund back wherever we, we move it around. Not when, just yeah. it will. That's right. Yep. Okay. All right. Done. Is that okay? Anybody have any objections? And then you still got the Okay. Leave that to do from yeah yeah. Well, that's when something comes up. We'll have to make that decision as a council well, when, mean, the, when the mayor brings something. Yeah, you know, I'll take a look at that seriously when uh, you know when, when we look at the at, at, as it flows in November because we'll know where we. Where. We'll mark it improvements. Two point two more like two. One nine nine seven up. But close to two million. But you've got a million or something, almost one point one million committed to do right now. And it's still going to stay with it. So that kind of self program is probably three or four times. Don't matter. It, 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 I understand, Ken. Accounting it causes you a little nightmare on the books, but it. Perfect example is that construction, that the general fund funded the 30 fund. Yeah. Okay, perfect example. This is the first year we're paying it back. Wait. At the end of the day, you know it's yeah, there. No, we, we, we lent it so you can get the, it. you know, that, that, it's there. It's okay. just showing elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But it's not taken out for arbitrary purposes. It's not new money coming in. It's not a revenue. It's just, just a, a way to say we've got that reserve and all right, to all right, can we, money coming in. It's not a revenue. It's just a way to say we've got that reserve in order to. All right, can we, can we? Finalize a decision here so we can move on to expenses. All right. All right. Mr. Lawrence wants to move it, leave it, leave it, leave it. We got three leaves. And Mr. Tildell says leave it where it is. That's four. So uh, we're going to leave it where it is. All right. Any other revenue considerations that we need to discuss? talk about that's going to affect the budget. I'll pull uh, Peter A. by to see just where we are on sales and we may be able to tuck some more money into potential sales that are that are moving towards com completion. Clearly that Rent or Magnolia sales. Hotels Rent or is sales. going to happen. Yeah. Lease, or, lease okay. income or sales. Yeah. But that's three years away for the real sale. We can realize the lease income. We can realize the lease income. You can you can forecast that lease income. You know, we, it's a pretty favorable lease. How about we also talked about certain fees, whether it's uh, youth leagues and all that stuff, and have we made any adjustments in the budget for that? 
Jerry, we haven't, we haven't adjusted fees yet. Uh, we took, there are two different kinds of fees. One is the fees that the, that the community development charges, mm -hmm. which would require an ordinance change. We, we adjusted the fees, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we adjusted the fees about five or six years ago to bring them in line with the other cities that we mm -hmm. want to And that was everything from planning fees all the way down to building permit fees. Right. So if y'all want us to reevaluate those and take another look at them. Yeah, because I, I wanted to turn down and say a child that they wouldn't like. Right. 
Okay, let's, we're going to go ahead and move on. It doesn't seem like there's any significant revenue opportunities uh, there at this point. Uh, any other comments on revenue? Any, any comments? Yeah, we, Mr. Gines? Uh, We'll, we'll be there real shortly, I promise you, Mr. Gines. Any other thing on revenue? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so I think that's our number. Yeah, let's move on uh, to expenses. Do you all want to break it down by department? you want to just throw it out there on what your thoughts are and we all chew on it? Right, it's the pleasure a of the council. piece of paper that looks like this. It's a department summary, the newest one. I just, it's got color. I don't think you were in color before. If anybody doesn't have one, I'll I don't give have mine one. up. I don't think. Did you give me one? Let's see one. I can get it. I can get it off the. Uh, no, no, I can get it off the uh, fund summary. I'm ready for comments. Okay. You're, you're on the combined fund statement. Okay. No, that's right. That's okay. What he's working on, I can. Well, they're, they're, we've got two plugs the in the dike. The bottom line is, is the actual expenses. That's at the three, uh, 39 million. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. they, that, that is the number, the negative number in this case, that is there before we apply any other financing sources. It's based essentially is, uh, uh, actual, actual, you, not actual. Yeah, I, you, you, you know this numbers as well as I know it or better, uh, Councilman. You know the top line, the top group of numbers is the revenue. The next group of numbers is the de department expenses. The next group is the non-department expenses, and then when you and then you and then you sum it up, and that you end up at, at negative, and then we apply other financing sources and then we reduce the deficit. Le to less than it was. So, so my concept that I mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is within line 52, mm -hmm. spend more than the in That's correct. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you count other financing, so if you don't count the other financing sources, which are, I don't want to say sleight of hand, but they are but applying. Uh, okay. Well, unless, unless, unless you have other funding no, sources. We, now, last year, you look at year to day gain of loss was 750, I mean, it was almost $700,000, right? Yeah, I, last year, and it was 1.2 million the year before that. Okay, I, if you look at your audit, and, and it'll tell you those numbers. I would, That's actuals. This, I, is, this, is, this is proposed. I would this only, is right, I would only, I would, similar to what the mayor was just saying, is that you, you're right, but you're, what, what you're saying, uh, Councilman, is that we have budgeted for seven of the ten it. years to use spend more than we were going to take in but that's not more, that happened. wasn't the outcome each of the last three years we had six million dollars you look at your three combined statements it was always 4.2 3.5 
over, you know, under, uh, uh, but yet when the, when, the, when the smoke cleared, we had cash in six, six million dollars in the last three years. We, we have budgeted, we have consistently, almost every year, budgeted to spend more than we were going to take in, but we actually... Because we have those other funding sources. Mm -hmm. happens, yeah. Yeah. But you, they're not anticipating that. Well, you know, we're looking at a hole we already dug last year that's going to uh, fill it in a little bit, you know. So, am I looking at then uh, on line 73 at 1.879 and now down to 1.5? Is that a hole I should be looking at? That's the real hole after we've applied other financing sources. One of which, the largest of which, is we're paying the general fund back for money that it loaned in previous years to the water sewer fund. And? Capital. Mm -hmm. yeah. And cap. Mm -hmm. So, what's the significance, significance of that three point nine million dollars? Why is it concerning the seven? It it, it should. I'm concerned. Yeah. It should. <laughs> it, 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 it should. Why should that concern? The revenues that you get year over year over year are not covering the expenditures. Yeah, year to day gain or loss. That's mm -hmm. right. Retained earnings. Retained earnings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and at some point, if we keep running these expenditures over revenues, you run out of where you're pulling that money, mm -hmm. don't you? Well, no, you, what, you're running out of. of, of it, it depends. If you run out of the other sources, you're right. Then you run it. Then you run. You hit the wall. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, so mm -hmm. Well, that's always in any mm -hmm. business model. Okay, Unless you have services and right. projects yeah, that are going to generate future <coughs> other sources of income. But, but mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm hearing is, what I'm, what I'm hearing is, well, we're spending more than we're taking in, but we make it up with a kind of slight hand mm -hmm. accounting, but really, they're other sources. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You got, you got capital, you got, you mean, mm -hmm. that's retained earnings. And you use some of that if you do overspend it. I'm just saying, look, the last two years, we haven't uh, spent more than we How do you on. build the fund balance? You build the fund balance with retained yeah, earnings gain or, or with right. gains. Well, we're and, you know, well, we, we got yeah. at least six to eight million dollars of that. No, I think you should worry about no. it. But you'd want it to be as low as you'd want it to be as low as you could as you can as you can un be uncomfortable. You 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 could make it lower right away by whacking out a whole bunch of police that you probably need. You could look, make it lower by whacking out a bunch of public works that you probably need. Right. Right. <laughs> you could. All right, proposed cuts, proposed cuts. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. What, 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 what other opportunities do we have? Okay, I thought you would.
And that, and that was done through uh, several mechanisms, one of which is directly related, goes back to council, having the guts to bump the number up a little bit. Over a four year period, we've raised ever, ever so slightly the water and sewer rates. The second one is we've picked up a lot of new customers. All right, we, we need to focus on a department and figure out what cuts do we want to make. So, okay. Any proposed cuts? Any proposed cuts? Do you have anything? You just set in the set in the table. Okay, Mr. Deming. Let me say this, and, we, and I meant to bring this up. This is what we're facing right now, and I really would, would ask some consideration. We just heard the 75-25 ball game, right? Okay. These are the things that we're going to face. First of all, first net goal is, is, uh, is uh, November 1st that the governor, this was the uh, uh, Restore Act funds, you know, we've got to, as well as tie plans and those kinds of activities. Governor's getting ready to announce those contracts, at least from his his bucket. We got to respond to that, and then by December first, the 30 million—that's our represent 75—that we're going to be competing against six counties, and then to the MBA, and then you know the governor's going to announce five folks. I mean, it, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of it's at least you know 10 different things that we've got to do, and if it's Gerald or, or Cliff or me or anyone. I mean, that's a lot of work to do in competing what we're going to compete with. I mean, they're two serious deadlines. You know, we, we engaged a, a key impact strategy, strategy and I would, would want to do that again because we, we've we already been fighting the ball game in special session. We've got, you know, a, another five million that we're trying to get from the Restore Act to finish Keesla outside gate and plus maybe two or three more. Uh, again, the OIG, OIG audit, we, we were able to successfully get Neiman to back us up. But there's also about $1.3 million that we choked down 16, 17, 18, and 19 that uh, we asking MEMA and FEMA to reimburse us for program management. And we've got to have it. We've been eating it. And we've been accruing that. We've got an offset in engineering. That's why that, off, that engineering, that's a lot of work to do. You know, Peter and some of the groups we talked, have been very successful with regard to some of the, you know, the franchise fees. And, and uh, I don't know if Peter's in the room, but I mean, Literally, that's economic development when we've increased, uh, you know, uh, real dollars in uh, uh, what we've received from AT&T, Cable One, and in Center Point. So, I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's bang for the buck. I mean, it's needed is what I'm trying to say. Just like the police, it's needed. I don't agree it's needed. I just want to understand how it's needed. Yeah. Completely different question. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way to get 
Right. Scope of services are provided. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can do that. Provide that to us. Um, and then second, we looked at numerous positions here in the city that I know that they're dismissive jobs or um, or just unnecessary. And I don't. But I have nothing against any employee. I love all of our district employees. So if I say someone's name, it's not because I don't like them or don't want them around. Well, I don't know. I really don't know what. The middle man between the middle man between our council and and public works or engineering department. Um, I don't understand that position and why our council clerks or council members don't just call the people of public works. I don't understand why there's a middle man there. Which? Craig Ross, well, Craig you, Ross you is public, the work control he's manager. He's he's manager. In. Okay. Yeah, we conserve. Yeah, but he was a member in, of the public. In work. the world I used to be in, that's the work control manager. He is. The, he is the. He and the two people that answer the phone down there take all the calls and then route those calls to the supervisors and then reconcile with the supervisors over who's doing which work and and in our work control system meet regularly with a. The, the, uh, the different supervisors and say, okay, did you finish this work order? Did you finish this work order? And so forth. He, I, Billy Ray doesn't like it when I say this because he thinks he's the most important guy in public works. <laughs> but I, I think the two most important guys in any public works organization is a work control clerk or a supervisor, that's Craig, the guy that answers the phone and routes the work to the different, you, you wouldn't want, it would be bedlam if every, everybody called the sign shop if they wanted to sign or the, the, the construction shop if they wanted something fixed on their driveway. If they, you had, there has to be some control over the flow of requests and, the, and then the assignment of work. And that's his job, Craig Ross's job. We did all that with the clerk. The three clerks on the council handled all that. Can I get mm -hmm. What, what, what clerks? What clerks? Yeah, no, the, the, the interfaces with City Works right now. That information needs to be yeah. put in City Works. Everything, every job that it, it both is water, sewer, port, anybody, or, or citizens, that goes to City Works to be assigned to a deal. Nobody, no clerk has been doing that except for this position. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, let me just say one thing. Mrs. Bohanovic was here for many years in Citizen Services, and the same position that Mr. Ross is in Citizen Services. He'll do the calls, mm -hmm. make sure that the work orders got done, call the people that was necessary. Mrs. Bohanovic did that for a number of years before she retired. That position is not a new position. We, we, so we just moved the we position to public works where it belongs. We, we, yeah. we certainly did. We gave additional mm -hmm. duties that were surpassing Ms. Lynette's abilities with the computer and, and things of that. But we still had a citizen service representative mm -hmm. that worked for the city. He's just taken on more tasks, which is with our mm -hmm. city works, in order to facilitate the different jobs that are in within the city. Where if my father calls and he calls, they go through the right. service. So it's, it's not a verbal thing. It's not a people calling around and ordering work. Yeah. I mean, every every call is recorded. Every call is, is goes into city works. City Works issues a service request. The service request goes to a shop. The shop decides whether to do the job or not. If they're going to do the job, they assign it to somebody and issue a work order. Eventually, that work order comes back with the labor and material on it. That labor and material gets entered and back into the system. And this is all basically being done by the work control system and, and, and the people in it, which is Craig and two ladies that answer the phone. Well, that's his Let me let me yeah. respond to Kirk Council Let me yeah, provide some, some scope of information on each and what job sets they do and that the one you have concern with. In my estimation, you know, you get what you pay for and there's a lot to do, you know, and uh, uh, it, it, that's we're trying to respond to a need and, and uh, a need in a lot of ways. So I will uh, get you that information on those folks. Well, I'm really sorry, and I 
Why are three people needed for that that position? You have Craig, and then you have two other people. Why are three needed in that? Well, yeah, for, yeah, for starters, the three are not always there. Remember, remember that we have we have employees that are between sick leave and vacation leave are not there all the time. So sometimes, and a lot of times, there's only two there. The, the supervisor is the, is the guy that deals with the superintendents and the supervisors that are in the different work sections. Okay. He's the guy that reconciles their work and deals with those guys. The other people, the other two ladies, just answer the phone, take calls, and record them in City Works. But they don't have the juice to manage the work and sup deal with the supervisor. How much do those two ladies make? I think they're, um, you, want to, you want to look up, is it $16 an hour or $18 an hour, something like that? Probably less than that. Thirty. It's less than that. Thirty thousand. Probably make twelve an hour. Okay. Correct. About twelve an hour. Well, Mr. Doris, I'm gonna tell you, you know, we we budget we budget this this these departments as close as we can. The mayor ensures during the year that we spend and don't spend accordingly. And, and like I say, budget is a working document. It's not that, that we're going to go and spend 50, 60 million dollars. You know, we, we anticipate what we can and can't do. We put in there the things that we would like to do in case a good thing, a good day happens because you get to budget once a year. You know, we like to put those things in there. But we have held down expenses. Our capital shows that we are not overspending our revenues. We have a positive amount and, and we are doing uh, and we are looking very closely at expenses. They're not going out and just doing willy-nilly things. You know, all these things are looked at. Y'all approve the expenditures, and, and I, I think it's a good budget. I mean, that's just me. The, the, those that's, are the that's positions our I think probably about $127,000. Let, let me, it, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Barrett, you got some more you want to talk about? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me ask a question, and this came out. That's what the clerks make. This came up at our last meeting about the firemen mm -hmm. and that we had a safer grant that's going to cover it. Uh, do we need to make any adjustments to those positions in this budget? We don't have Councilman, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yet. I think we don't know when that station is going to be complete. Uh, we know the grant is there if we need it. And if, if we need it in the last month or two of the fiscal year, when things are a little more clear about where we are, we go ask for the grant, and we have to just match it for those two months. So, but I don't know that I I, I wouldn't bet on that fire station being ready and and occupied. I, it may not be ready this fiscal year. Right. Correct. And so that's why we. We anticipate it being ready as soon as the fourth quarter. And that's what we're recommending to add those, add the grant, and add the personnel. The grants but the grants in here. The We're grant. not adding a grant. The right. grant. The grants. The grants not in here. We have we have accepted the grant, but we haven't asked for the money yet. And is it correct we can't budget the grant, or can we budget the grant in this budget? You can budget it if, if you have people budgeted in, but you know that's something you have to have. But we have people in in this budget. Not for the safer grant. Mm -hmm. No. Not for the safer grant. We won't okay. be hiring those guys. Hopefully till. The very tail end of the fiscal year. All right. So, if we do a scrub of all the departments, is there any opportunities unfilled positions? Are there any opportunities for us to, in this budget to make any more adjustments? I and don't I just tell me no. I mean, I know there has to be at least one. Well, I know that you you must have um, recognized some of the emails sent out six. You you recognize that there's some that you need to make. Well, they're painful. It's right on this piece of paper. There are two different groups that you could look at. One is a group of the vacancies. Now, you understand that in a, in a city with 600 and some odd uh, uh, employees, there's churn at all times. And there are vacant police positions, vacant firemen positions that are vacant for a short while and then they were filled. Virtually every one of the positions that's in that uh, vacancy list is either be, have already been interviewed, is in the process of being hired, is ready to come to work next week, and so forth and so on. So I would tell you that 
if it were me, I would not be trying to figure out if there's a vacancy here and there's a vacancy there. What I'd be looking at is what positions did we did you add in the budget earlier in this work earlier workshop, and do and how many of those can we do without? And that's what I that's what I gave you. you the, the, if you look at the the uh, departmental budget, you'll notice most of the departments actually went negative. The only real increases are in police, in public works, in fire, in legislative, in, in, in the I, movement of the IT money, which disguises you know, admin and, and executive. But the real, numbers, the real numbers are in police, fire, and public works. Those are all departments that you all felt needed some extra help. So, so, so what's there? There's a $490,000 of additional police labor and $340,000 worth of equipment that, that this council in an earlier workshop agreed to add. In public works, there's $213,000 worth of bodies and $250,000 worth of equipment, which we have had agreed to add. And then miscellaneously does, you know, 25,000 in admin, 30,000 in community development, 50,000 in engineering. Those are all equipment items. So those are ads that, that were in the budget. So I know that you entertained my, um, my idea of outsourcing some things. Would that not relieve some of the burden on the public works personnel to where we would need to add some of the ads? Well, what, what, it, what it would do is, a, yeah. What it would do is it would allow them to be the remaining existing forces to be applied to where they are better used. Right. When you just said when we agree to add two hundred and something thousand, mm -hmm. two hundred and something thousand. Right. Sounds sounds like a lot. It's uh, a cut three laborers. So warehouse guy or something. So let me ask let, let me ask it another question. When were these positions budgeted to begin? First of October. So they're beginning the first of October. Could it be pushed a little bit to save a little bit of money, or are we splitting, like uh, Dr. Tisdale so eloquently that, said, that, hairs? It absolutely could be done. You can, you can, always, you can always budget them for a, a portion, portion of the year. Portion of the year with a clear and understanding that next year. It's a full year. No, I got it. I get it. And we're going to have all those property taxes that are going to going to be flowing in. January, January, January 1st. So that's it. We're we're eliminating a quarter to begin these these additions. What's the pleasure of the council? Y'all agree to agree to that? It's going to save a little bit. So on me on public works. Two hundred thousand. Go back to my original question. If we're outsourcing these positions, how viable are, are they if we do outsource the maintenance work that we were talking about? The uh, lawn mowing. Right. Easiness. Basically, we've got a contract. Since you brought that up, and I think you're aware, I'm saying for everybody else, the RFP has already been reviewed and is ready to hit the street for us to be able to engage a small business lawn mowing service. More than one. To, to, uh, to, to, go, to mow the gosh, a uh, hundred or more lots around the, the city that we're mowing, and that would relieve a couple, of, a couple of guys that are out there doing that now that could be then applied to doing ditches and, and, other, and other things that are not getting done today. How much are you going to say? No, not going to say, no, no, actually, but we're, we're going to be able to do lawn, more lawn we're mowing for less money. Do. Well, that, that way you don't have to hire more people. It, it is safe. So if we don't do this, yeah. we spend more money on more employees, which this way, we, we, we're awash on money, but we have two more laborers to do things and three more laborers to right. do things that they we, couldn't. Based on your discussion before. at that other workshop, we added money into uh, other contractual services in order to hire this company. Right. Rather than hire an additional, at the, at the time, we were looking at hiring like five, and we ended up hiring just three. Okay, I have a question. Most of these lots are in probably Ward 1 and 2 these empty lots and so in no way does that affect word four six and seven the north crew we're already way short-handed we actually, need sorry it does because the two extra laborers 
this can be moved somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Then it increases the hands-on in Ward 4 or 5. That, that is where most of the vacant lots are. And, and right. by pushing these two departments' positions to January, it's going to save us at least $200,000 in this budget. Personally, I think that's a but really six, good It's 600000 and you take uh, 600000 in it public it. works? No, but police and, and public works combined. It's 600000 in in positions. In this budget, well, I don't. I don't know if that includes. That. I don't know if that includes benefits or not. It's probably not, the benefits probably aren't included in this. We've talked mostly about public works. Where the, where the big dollars are, the, by by double, is the police. That's six additional new positions. Right. Um, well, I think you just used three. Tom really what, 200 something dollars. Or, or, or 25%. Yeah. 25% of 750. Right. So that's a good start. Plus uh, benefits. I, have, I, I can tell you we're at a critical point. And, and, you know, we, we, We've said this every year for the last few years, and I'm to the point now that I'll have some people, some services are just going to have to. We're, we're and it's Chief, we're not cutting you completely. We're uh, just moving it, and then you got those positions I moving forward. Saying, sir, I understand it 100. percent I don't, I don't really have the time for you to move those positions. Just a few years ago, we had 151 policemen with 161 positions. Today, I have 122. A few years ago, we had 151. We had one major event, mm -hmm. and that was March. Now, eight months out of the year, we have a major event. It takes a full year to get a policeman trained, so we can cut him loose and be confident on him for a full year. So we are at a critical point. We've been there for a little while, and they're separate. We, we, we also have the homeless detail now. I will have to eliminate I do not have the manpower to continue to do that day after day with 122 police. I just don't think we services are needed I think they're, they're the deal and, and what you're willing to say suppose you could reduce that uh, about two hundred fifty thousand dollars that 1.59 we just whittle that down by two hundred fifty thousand dollars we're still you know we're not anywhere close to uh, uh, in and in and out balancing but I mean the services are needed in, in, in every stretch we hit a board meeting last night you heard what people said personnel 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 uh, one a way to attack this too we have we have retirements pretty much every week and you know no don't feel anything that, that comes you know comes about that's another way to attack this thing so uh, move forward with uh, you know that 1.5 uh, sort of uh, out of out of balance and, and then uh, see what you can do could literally time and time again we've uh, we've, we've, we've uh, saved money over actuals by not filling that And you can always come with a budget amendment mm -hmm. and, and come to the council and justify, hey, this I mean, is what and we not need. just please spot across the board. Can't make it. 
Kenny made the point that, you know, some things happen. We don't know why. We can't forecast them. We feel like they're going to happen, but you can't, you can't, uh, you know, stake your reputation as a journalist on this, you know. When, when I was, when I was bidding work as a contractor, one of the things I always built into my bid was vacancies. Because I knew that there was a certain amount of gap. And almost every job in the city during a year, there's a gap where they're not there and they're turning over and so forth. That's one of the places we pick up money during the year. But what if, what if, like in the police and fire department, when you, when you don't fill the positions, you get too low to, to man the truck, the equipment? Well, then you have to fill it. I mean, like, literally to do provide the same, you know, response times, which, you know, you got to maintain that response. Just like tellers in the bank. You know, you, uh, it, whether you replace with a piece of equipment or a person, there's a response time that you've got to maintain. If, if and, and in you order to do that, you got then you got to replace it. Less than three guys on a truck, every twelve people on a fire in the yeah. city would pay for that because their property tax and everything else would go up. But, but that's what I'm asking. Is, so we have we we have to maintain certain levels. Mm -hmm. Boots on the ground that you know, need to have, John. The thing is, I think that the, the number of employees that we have right now, if, if, you, if you leave that the way it is, back down those, those few positions. No, don't, don't back them down. No, no, I don't, I don't, just, I don't, Chief just told you that that's not the, not the way to do that. No, no, it's all of them, okay? I'm saying that there's enough play and it has been year after year after year that we don't fill positions that, that, that are retired in the middle of the year and it's gonna wash it. That's my position. You, you have to know that the budget that you're looking at is not what these yes. guys ask yes. for. Because yeah, they ask for much more. And, for and more I mean, I know there's seven of us, but just for the record, I'm not willing to support or vote for a budget that cuts the police, the fire department, or public works any more than what we have in it right now. That's just me. I mean, y'all can, there's seven votes, I know, but just, you know, we're, I'm not willing to cut any less than what we have already on those three departments. Let me ask you that, that position about not filling vacancies unless absolutely. Are, are you going to vote for an uh, unbalanced budget? Hold on. Let me, let me ask him something. Okay. I don't support a budget that cuts police and fire at all. And I'm not asking to cut public works either. What I'm asking is that we understand that the, the services, the professional services, that we put a little money into that pot to relieve well, some seven. of the use of the personnel so that personnel can be better used and move over. That doesn't cut what they have, it <coughs> frees up more people. That's the only thing that I support, and that's just a deferment of that hiring. We're just gonna mm -hmm. defer it into the next quarter. Mm -hmm. Then that, that would potentially even add, when we see that bump in November, that would potentially add more to public works. It's not a budget to cut that, it's just deferring, adding more. If you wanna do it the way you're doing, I'll support it if we then take the personal services out of public works, I mean, out the, the professional services, out of the administrative budget because we won't need, we'll have more people to cut grass. So it's one or the other. We either add more people and use the money from professional services to add more people. Contractual, contractual services, service, yeah. Okay. Right. Or what do we put in the budget for contractual services? We actually services up contractual services. Another 50 grand. Yeah. So right. 50 grand? So we already moved it in one of our meetings, but that number has already been adjusted in here. But what that, that's going to return a, a bigger boom for our buck. 50 grand to, to free up two or even two three minutes. public works people, two what do two or three public right. people cost? So that's, yeah. the, that's the, the bang for the buck is right there. That, that you know, contract will come to council before it's awarded and, 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 and you can and always again, table it. You know, this first quarter is going to be critical for the city of Biloxi, you know, because things are going to be going to become apparent in this first quarter because of things we say. Then take a hard look about adding even more to contractual services, whether it's striping or whether it's, you know, any of these things that we have to do. And I mean, Councilman, we're, we're saying a deferral, whether it's three months or two months, at any time after this budget is passed, uh, any department can come back to the council and say, listen, I, we've had an increase in some of our revenues, or if even if we haven't had an increase, they can come and request, we need a couple more positions. I understand that. But we're trying to pass a balanced budget. Here. I understand. You just okay. heard the chief. He said that he can't wait three months for those new hires, and that's where the majority of the money is coming from. Yeah, but you're not going to get $200,000 out of public works. I didn't works say in three months. I, I was going to get it out of public works. When we That's were having this year. budget discussion, we said if we deferred these positions for three months, we would get over $200,000. That's all. The That's what we had in the discussion. That was all, all positions if we pushed it back uh, three months, deferred it for three months. Yeah, that's we're having a budget discussion. Okay. okay. 
Good question. Mm -hmm. Elevators, uh, 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 some of the phone things we'll be realizing. You know, this is our last increment of, of you know, some services that we're paying to, uh, what's the name, uh, uh, Venture Capital, but about 100000 will go away uh, at some point in the, in the year. But we still have our last increment of about 100000 there that will not be with us in a year from now because this is we've upgraded and got consistent digital equipment throughout the you know the city I ever, ever, ever you know we had three four different systems and i think right here we experienced about 10 days with that old hardware going away you remember that mm -hmm. so there's some there will be some some i'm not sure exactly what point in time there's some things like that but the elevator we consolidated what contracts have we consolidated mike mm -hmm. uh, uh fire fire yeah. 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 fire alarm fire suppression uh, elevators telephones those are all areas that we've consolidated to try and... Have we saved any money, Joe? We saved any money, yes. How much you save, like in the fire, in the law, in the elevator? Okay. Can they, can they do the service? I mean, just like this one guy cutting her clocks. I mean, some of this stuff, you know, I don't know how you can get all this done. So just like in an elevator, do you have a guy that can handle all the elevators or you got so, the money? Well, I mean, is there an option to sell them? Yeah, we did cheap lots. <laughs> we sell them. We did cheap lots of them. We got about 50 properties that we got to cut. All right, uh, have we made any headway here? Are we keeping everything the same? We're not changing any positions. We're going to keep the labor. Okay. Well, the, we, we did on telephones. We, we will on elevators once that's executed. Air, air conditions, too. Well, you can say this. You know, you have to leave the budget. You, you're, you're fine with that as far as just legal requirements. And the revenue that's been here are not valid. So the expenditure are not valid. But it does matter. You know, so you, you meet the legal requirements. That's a long term problem. When I say long term, it's not really long term because if it's not addressed in some form or fashion in the near future, it gets it can get mm -hmm. But legally you you you've got a budget that you can work with. And you have to remember this is a budget, like we were saying a while ago. The decision the throughout the year is that that the outcome the actual result. But this is just a budget, it's a plan to go into next year. You meet all the legal requirements with this budget. Yeah, you've got a positive number down the bottom, so you have a legal budget. And that positive budget, that positive number down at the bottom, we looked at this four years in a row, it's gone up. Not case, much, but a little bit. Too. Four years in a row. All right, so, but I still want to focus on the labor part. No deferred, we're not, we're not going to defer. Anyone else support? I understand. Anybody else support that that same concept? Mr. Tisdale, do you have any opinion? Right. Or, or alternately, we could not award that contract for a while. Mm -hmm. more slack mm -hmm. and more flexibility. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right. You'll you'll have that opportunity. That that contract. Yeah, I think we should go through the process of finding if the RFP works and people respond and we get good pricing. But at some point that would come to council, and if council didn't like the way the budget was going, you could always say, hey, table that baby for a while. All right. So, but for budget purposes, defer public works for three months. Yes. Yes. yes or no. We're just deferring. You'd say no, Nathan. You'd say no, Ms. Newman. Deferring, deferring public works for three months. Yes, Mr. Gines. No comment. No. Defer it. No. No, don't defer it. Okay. All right. So that I think we got four no's. Right? We got one no comment. One no. Two no's. Three no's. Put a bunch of the sale signs out. <laughs> yeah. That's going to save also if it gets sold. So it won't, you know. Hey, uh, Billy Ray, could you stand two or three months of deferring a little bit of labor for two? But, so the director says he could he could deal with three months. So Billy Ray, if we, if we get that service contract out, how many rates would that be? How many more hands would that be from doing that? I'm going to look at three. And deferring and if you sell that lot, you'll do even more. So, I agree. So, your director is saying that's palatable. Uh, yes, they're going to collaborate and they're going to work it out. And this is we're getting out of grass cutting season a little bit, so I think we ought to go with it, council so members. What's our plus benefits, or that's raw labor? Plus benefits, so another 25 percent. That's going to be another, that's probably ne a good discussion next fiscal year. But. We don't want you to hush. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
no, no, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm choking it to say something. You, look, you listen to Jason the other day, you know, we got things to do. And of course, life cycles of these big ticket items, that's a big thing to do. We got to look at it over five years, life cycle of these things that we have. And we've got some natural drop off points. So at 9.2, that's generating debt service in just a few years, it's going to be 7.5. You channel that you know, to the general fund and to do these things to do. But there, you know, before, you know, if we pass the bond issue or not, you know, uh, there are some natural places in two years that it, that we're going to need 7.5 mils to service that debt. That we need 9.2 mils right now. All right, we're going to we're going to stay we're going to stay on this budget, Director. I want to uh, just acknowledge, appreciate your candor and honesty on on saying you can live without it. I'd, I'd ask the council just for a reconsideration of the vote. Can we defer public works for three months? Is, it, is that okay? Listening to our director. Right. Like, like to do it. I think in the long, long run, it, it'd be an efficient way to get work done. But how many new? How many? So here's my statement: is How many new employees? Three more employees. But in the PRP, we save three employees. It's the same thing. It's it's a push, but we save money. But we spend how much with the contractor? And we spend 125 thousand on the other side. Right. What's in the budget is both right now. Right. We have both. 50,000 is already there. My point is, that gives, that, both of those give public work essentially 12 and a half, 6 good people to do work. So if we're trying to get public works three people, then all we need is the RP because he can move those people out of doing that job. Then if we do both, we give public work 60 people. And if he says he can live right now with just three, then why not spend 50 grand and give him just three? Why not? We're talking about deferring it until we see what the numbers look like. And mm -hmm. giving them three more people is three more people. I mean, that's a plus. It doesn't have to be six more people. Three more people is three more people. And we can come back with a budget amendment and say we're adding three more people to serve, you know, because we have income coming in or, or whatever the case may be. We're trying to hit that. You remember that three million uh, figure that you were three million plus figure you were looking at. We're trying to whittle about thirty six thousand dollars off of there. The you know. You do it ten times as a quarter million dollars. We're going to look at all of it. That's why we're scrubbing through this. Can we revisit what Dr. Tisdale talked about? Because, like I said, like he was talking about, sooner or later we're going to be facing some things, and uh, we're in business to take care of the citizens. You're talking about and raising taxes. I think we're past the. Well, the I'm, well I'm talking right now, so I okay. got the floor. Let me have the floor, sure, please. Go ahead. I ain't said it all night long. Mm -hmm. All day long, so Proceed. please let me have the floor. Thank you. you got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we're at that point now where, where we got to start looking at things. Uh, we we got to provide service. I think Sherry was talking about uh, um, uh, on the east side how participation is down. There's no community centers. We're going to have to, sooner or later, we're going to have to start investing. We're going to have to start building. Our police department can't continue to go down. Uh, down. Our fire department can't continue to go down. Uh, we, we have to start wisely thinking about our community. I have a community that's looking to come back sooner or later. And s at some point, we're going to have to look at investing in these communities. Our, our city cannot continue to go down. And, and right now, uh, looking at my, the community that I live in, we're, we're, we're on that downtick, and it's time for us to start moving up. So what Dr. Tisdale is, is, is proposing and I know you wanted to throw all of the way, that away. Some of this uh, nonsense that we're just beating a dead horse, it doesn't make any sense. When are we going to start investing in our communities? And again, like the library system, uh, the, I have the highest unemployment rate. We need the library system. And we, we're not even looking at that. We're looking at just chop, chop, chop. 
and not investing. So at some point, I'd like the council to, to start thinking about some of those things. That's, that's all I have to say. So thank you. You're welcome. The library system, we ain't, we ain't chopped it. We give them $695,000. We ain't chopped anything. She asked for a computer. She creates a $2 million budget. 1% of that budget, she can buy the computer. We give them six ninety five. dollars mm -hmm. We don't give anybody that kind of money. 695000 every year. And we're not chopping the library. We pay up the thing at 695000 They requested something new. We didn't chop their budget. We give them the 695 we then give them in that budget. Now, you don't look at something else, that's fine. But that's, that's what we give for the library. Well, we ain't cut anything. We did it at school, we didn't do $695,000. Nobody in the city would give any more money to than that. So I'm not against the library, but we support the library. It's pretty strong. Okay, I want to close the book on public works if we're going to make any adjustments. Are we going to make any? Robert? Leaving it this way. We're leaving it. Uh, Kenny, you're going to say 36000 by the turn, you almost paid for 50000 Which is already in the budget. Right. So we can we can carve out this other portion out of what we've been talking about because it's dealing with three people with the with the professional services. If down the road we need more than three people, then we can look at the gain revenue, then we can look at doing that. But I think we take those three people out because of the professional services contract, we're getting the three people already. So you're saying cut them out altogether, the, the three additional positions? I think and, we should have never seen and it four and nine nine six. Up. So you're talking about getting public works at six to me. That's what we're talking about. If the goal is to get public works six people, then you're right. That's what we should do. If, if we need six new people in public works, all right, so, so the, and I'm going to beat the dead horse one more time. There's three proposals. Keep it like it is. The second proposal is to defer it for three months. Go ahead and put the RFP that, for the 50000 that's in the budget to get started. Uh, those are our three options. What, what say you, Mr. Lawrence, which option do you prefer? Yes, sir. In He's talking about if they don't have time, that they may have a little time they can carve out to come over and do some, some additional work. Right. Right. Except they won't yep. be straight time if they've already got the 40 hours in for that week. That's true. Thank you, Director. All right, so we got these three proposals. Let's, let's get this cleared off. So what, what do you say, Mr. Lawrence? Which one do you prefer? Okay. Okay. And you, you can always come for a budget amendment if he says, hey, I'm short and I need, I need some more folks. But we're trying to get this budget approved by Friday.
All right. So by, by, if we cut all three of those positions, we say 108 plus. No, there's 108. That's the benefit of the house. 108,000. 108,000. That includes all the employee housing. Yes. Family insurance, everything, right? All of it. Y'all think that saves that $50,000 job? We'll take it down to the end. When I was. All right, if you, you're okay if Billy Ray's okay. All right. All right. With the understanding that you come back to us and, and ask, you know, for more, if we get more money coming in and we see our, our revenues increasing. All right, Mr. Gines? No? Yes? Mr. Deming? Yes? You're with Billy Ray? You stand with Billy Ray? I stand with Billy Ray, too. Okay. All right, so Mike, if you'd make that adjustment. So, let's go make the adjustment. We're taking three people off. That's correct, and we're adding the 50 with the understanding that if we our revenues increase, you know, the... Uh, well, we're not going to write it in. I'm just saying with the understanding that he can ap approach the council saying we need more help. All right, let's move on uh, to more departments and, and issues. 108. 108. She's got a stage in capital, in capital item. What's the stage for? Everything. Every other weekend when somebody wants to borrow it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend cutting it out because it broke during one event yeah. and it was. It's falling apart. Yeah. The, yeah. the billfish tournament uses it. And Churches get it all the time. All right, let's move on. Um, they don't. Who's paying? We don't. Very rarely do we get any money for it. If they have, the if it's on city property, they have to pay unless it's um, approved for waiver. Yeah, and they, they do pay the $500 and the police and all that kind of stuff when they rent a venue with, with it. So, okay. Let's, uh, let's move on. Let's see what other opportunities there are. Let's go through this scrub. I know you've changed all these computers this year and there's always looking for them, something for housing. Is that just this year, one year, price going to be similar? That's just your support and service and we moved it around. We still been paying it. We just put it in the administration. Right. No, it won't be changed. I mean, we're trying to reduce that figure in a lot of ways. I mean, there's a, uh, you know, a support and, and, and services and maintenance is a big figure. We're trying to wheel that down. But uh, we're not, next year will be the same, It'll, that figure, Will be the same, and there won't be in any of the departments. It's all in one spot. Yeah, so number, yeah. Like that. yeah. So that's going to be every year. Well, it has been. It has been. You know, we got three sets of, uh, of, of sort of the financial budgetary accounting, as well as you know uh, the the police and fire mm -hmm. and GIS and uh, uh, what is the other one? But it's four big categories. I know you survive like a million dollars. Water uh, utility billing. We're the supplier of the million dollars, I can give that to you. It says supplier of the million dollars. In administration budget? In administration or that's required? Administration. administration. That's where IT has been placed. Services and charges, it's going to be, that, that is going to be the $490,000, 469. So that was that, and then another 265 is the number for the county them to collect their taxes. So that's seven hundred thousand right there. The rest of it is for um, other professional services, telephone, you know, light, mm -hmm. power. Which are the professional services? Well, the contractual cases. Cases. No. Other, well, no, other professional services is uh, we're paying the uh, engineer uh, report. 
stuff like that? Yeah, engineering services. Uh, we're buying uh, consultant services like the, the uh, lobbyist. That's another professional yeah. service. Other professional services. Services. Yeah. Where, where's that? Where's software and support? In what? what? Software support. Software and support. The software and Absolutely. Platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the four hundred something thousand that, that has been spread from the departments back to one department. Mm -hmm. Mr. Deming, go ahead. Yeah, Keep. Yeah, we we put fifty thousand uh, of that. The two hundred. Two hundred thousand. That was inclusive of that. 50, 50, but, but of, right. 50, one quarter of the other professional services, so I, I which is that, five months. Our request is that we have some outlay of what needs right. to be part of it and it's a compliment. And I kind of got a uh, voice to know, you know, we're doing the research of work and what actually has to be accomplished. I mean, what's the aim of the document? Well, I think it, the little bit of the uh, uh, OIG thing that yeah, has its footprint on it. You know, or, or why MEMA has, has supported our position, okay, as well as, you know, I, I anticipate and I'll write this in the form of a memo of these items that we need immediate attention coming up. And, and I, I would, you know, if it's proper to do it Friday, I would like to uh, describe the services that I think we need to do immediately. The two big things uh, is, is the November uh, Restore Act thing. He's been with, you know, not only the governor, but the lieutenant governor too. The tie lands and some of the things that, uh, even though, there was some, some uh, the 1.05 million, I think that was a result of his, uh, even though there were some, uh, some restrictions on the 350,000 we talked about the other day. But that was his footprint. But also, uh, we've got probably 1.3 million a year on uh, RPR, you know, uh, inspection services, and we've got to get movement with MEMA, and, and actually FEMA, and OIG. But, uh, the December 1st, we've got to have applications to MDA that's going to be passed and recommended for the 30 million. Okay, that's going to be you know in, in competition with the, the six counties, and uh, as well as November, where we've got to be on the governor's list for his restore act. Primarily for that five million, the last go around, it can be out of Go Mesa or it can be out of MDA. Or wherever but we got to finish, we got five million that we need. We were promised this past uh, January for uh, outside the gate, and it could be as much as you know seven point five. So he's going to be interacting, and he's the only one. He, he'll be only representing Biloxi. He won't be in any other city or any other situation. That's you know uh, that's key, I think. Well, we already put up 70,000. Yeah, and, and, and again, that's what, you know, direct result of, of his efforts in Washington and, and Jackson. But, uh, you know, we've got to have some support. We've got to have man, you know, boots on the ground up there, and, and it's critical. And I would uh, engage him now, uh, uh, ask for a contract with those same, I think we had six months. Seven, six, we did seven months last year. Seven um, months. But it's, well, we've got to carry him through April of the, uh, or have some presence because the, the next uh, uh, legislative session is coming up too. But it's it's important. We had somebody you know along with Cliff and everybody else that that we need to be developing these lists. Not only with Thailand's but the Restore Act, as well as the uh, you know the 75 percent deal. What does Cliff got to do with that? Well, he's you know he's working those those angles, both outside the gate, inside the gate, MDA. Uh, uh, it, it, it takes time. Literally. Yeah. Uh, other than we you know, we, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, that. Uh, I think also Peter has to that concert opportunity, the, the uh, amphitheater concert uh, tour, mostly uh, you know uh, country kind of uh, uh, tours that have haven't been successful in uh, Meridian, in Memphis, in Tuscaloosa. We're going to do that. We're going to no. We're, we're going to do an RFP for. For a, a help, help um, organizing events. One of one of the things we talked about was capital, and uh, we we had a discussion with a bond representative, and uh, there's a need for paving, an additional paving bond. Uh, does the council want to discuss that at this meeting? I don't think it's needed. I don't think it's needed. Does it does it need to be addressed in this budget meeting, Mike? It doesn't. 
I put this in the package I sent around to you. The, the top sheet is this is the back. This is the capital project right. budget that will transfer from one year to the other. What I would propose we do is add a separate sheet to it. It really doesn't carry any weight because there's no numbers on no, no There'll be no values. So These are projects that we propose to be considered during the year. Are, do we have to have some intent in the budget, or do we say, I asked that question last week, and I think he said, no, we don't. We don't have to have any intent in there about, about, about a, a, a so whether would, or not we're going to do a bond. I would, I'll say I would that. prefer to preserve that discussion. For later. And For later. And the budget, if we want to go to bond. Okay. All right. Putting a, putting a proposed list of projects is just a feel-good thing, but it doesn't carry any weight, does it? Okay. It'd, it'd be no... Uh, any other budget items that you, the council wants to discuss? Oh, yeah. We had a, some executive with the same thing with the citizens' charge type thing. Where is that? Say that again. From the, from the executive department. We got 212 and 101. The difference of 173,000. Yeah, I remember that. That's the B news. Yes. That's the B news. Hmm? Yeah. B news. The printing and bond. Oh. B news. Do you have one that looks like this? And then you have to get them on the back. It was the last sheet back, you I think. You have to put it in to do it. And, and there's two sheets to it. He charges for advertisement and he gets reimbursed for yeah. other expenses. Uh, you have a reference file, so we have to show it as things. That's our next file. That's our next file. I could add anything to that list. Yeah. So, yeah. Councilman Lawrence is asking: Is the is the revenue that it's generating covering the expense? Yes. Okay. We need to know that That's a ton of money. We do have it. Some senior. That's the idea. We set up an account, so all of the monies that that are donated, if you will, advertising is sold, goes into that account in the general fund. Okay. Uh, I got that thing to bring it from the, the budget we had, the legislative budget. Mm -hmm. I like to add $5,400 to that budget. Uh, for what section? To, yeah, the payroll. Council, council budget? Yeah, the council budget. $5,400 where? And the payroll, whatever you call it, the payroll is I'm going to add that. People. The payroll. The reason I'm doing this, is because in our budget, we don't have all the time. And all of a sudden we have a night meeting, then we have more night meetings, and they have water meetings every other week now. The, the clerk has to be there. So you don't have two or three hours every other week. So. That's easy enough to do. Yep, we'll do, we'll do. Easy, that's easy. But that kid has work in the night meeting. Well, no, it's just be part of that it has to be an overtime. Oh, yeah. You want $5,000? Yeah, it was uh, 200. I had to go down. It's 54 and all. And that, you could mitigate that by changing people's schedules to, if you know, about a late night. And meeting. If, if we don't use it, we can re, mm -hmm. reallocate and do a budget you amendment. Use it, you can't change the schedule. You've got three minutes and I'm going to go. You could change people's schedule. <laughs> yeah. If you, you can have a night meeting, well, I gotta go pick up a park. You can have somebody come to work late at four thirty, and then work later out. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay. A good manager does this. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not a lot of money. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ich habe mich auf den Weg in den Weg gebracht. Ich habe mich auf 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 den Weg gebracht. Ich habe mich About a million dollars. That is a half a million of it in the fire department. Yeah, that's, that's fire departments. That's for us to do. By the way, the fire department is a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit I'm, I'm listening. It's the same point I made, Paul. <laughs> you can eliminate. All right. Your, there's a Councilman Lawrence is proposing adding 5,400. Uh, okay. All right. And then November and December, when everything's really supposed to come in for Christmas, then we can have to do the sound system go back and look at that. What are you saying? It's the obvious that 30,000 is the first All right. Let, let me say this about that. We, this exercise we're going on right now, we, we're, we're expecting some, some camera kind of updates on replacing this. Uh, and I would, instead of taking the whole 30,000, leave about five in because we've got some immediate plans. Well, we were yeah. actually talking about leaving 25 in. Put another five. Put, What's he saying? Do, do the fifty-four hundred leave leave another five in for for sound for system? For yep. what we need to do with, with the audio. Okay. All right. Everybody, everybody, good with that? So we don't. So we go from thirty basically to ten. Right. Yep. Good. You're all right. Okay. All right. Let me re let me reinstate let me restate what's happening. There's thirty thousand in the capital budget for a new sound system. We're talking about reducing that to only taking five thousand of that thirty thousand for the proposed uh, overtime uh, that Mr. Lawrence has proposed, and another five thousand for the room for whatever electronic enhancements. And that's it. So it reduces it about twenty, 20 about twenty thousand. Right. Nineteen thousand six hundred dollars. Right. So we got two. I know two people are for it. Mr. Mr. Tisdale, are you for that? It, we're we're actually reducing our overall expenses. Another. There was thirty thousand in the capital budget for a sound system. We are now reportioning that figure. We're only going to take five thousand for electronic enhancements, another fifty-four hundred for the clerk's additional overtime salaries. That's it. The rest of it we're eliminating. Nineteen, nineteen something we're eliminating. That's correct. I can hear you perfectly. I think. Nope. I'm putting five thousand to it that way. Yeah, he's putting five thousand into the yeah. enhancements. So A V. The reason that twenty five thousand was there was because we have issues that the clerk will tell you about the sound system and the recording for the minutes that, that are transcribed. An additional five thousand dollars is to upgrade, I think, their computer. That computer pick up all and if we have income coming in, we can always do a budget amendment to do those enhancements. I've been signing them for eight months. I've, I've had no problem with the minutes. So what, so what we're saying is we're going to scrap that sound system and we may come back to it later. Correct. That's basically what we're Correct. Uh, would that $5,000 will address a whole lot of that, not $25,000 worth. I mean, literally, I met with Peter Petro and, and a couple other ones about what we need to do for the equipment here as well as the camera ability, you know, within this room. Leave 5000 and we'll get, we'll get what we need done. Okay. Good. And 
Reduce it by 19.6. Sort of. No. All right. Okay. Are you good? In video. I would offer an amendment. I've already got the guy. You know, we've got some budget. I wasn't going to use 25 cents. Let me let me offer just an amendment. Instead of reducing it 19.6, let's reduce it 14.6 and leave another 500 to make sure we have enough to upgrade the computer. So we're losing. We're leaving 10. We're going to leave 10 for the capital projects and five four into the overall. Okay. We we're paying two-thirds of yeah. so, All right. so, Robert, you, that's your proposal. Do you agree with? Are you okay with that? Why uh, okay. what, what, yeah. yeah, long as we have enough to... I think that he'd rather um, so have it? more there than not enough. So I that's think fine. We've reduced the budget by 14 to 6. I think so that's one start. We'll get that. Okay, so we'll take that number that's 30. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it. That's fine. Okay, so we've got two, three. Okay with it, Mr. Garns? I think as long as we have enough. I got, we got 10 to work with. Yes. Okay. I got 10 to work with this room. And we can always, again, if they, we got extra money coming in, we do a budget amendment and so spend whatever we need to spend. More, right? Right. All right. I guess somebody will tell Mike, Mike to put that in. Okay. <laughs> Any other opportunities? Yeah, I have a discussion on uh, the insurance. I've uh, been dealing with insurance for a long time, and I think we have an opportunity to take the bottom of the okay. And we'll know when we do a comparison. We don't know until we try it. We'll know next year when we do a comparison. I really don't care if you're going to five minutes for one year. Like you said, over the last hour, we have to do that tonight. I'll get it down to the little part. I mean, it makes, that's what makes sense. I, I support that. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Gaines, do you support free? All right. Wait. We got those votes, so the five dollar copay goes away at zero, so, zero copay. Will that adjust our budget? What? It will a little bit. It will. Yeah. It will. It potentially could increase the upfront cost 
to the city on a trip because we'll be paying more. Yeah. To Mike, we're, we're going to reduce the bond dollar copay to zero. Okay. What was the second tier? 20? 40? So we, we, we don't know what the employees are going to do, but this is what we think they're going to do? Correct. Okay. Guess we'll find out. Can always put change it back. Yeah, we, that's what we said. We can all, if it doesn't mm -hmm. work, we can always change it. All right. So y'all did hear that. We're reducing the $40 copay to 20 uh, to 10 and the five dollar copay is zero. Well, we we track this very carefully. You, you all remember I, I give you this little chart every once in a while. I, once a month I give you that. We'll see how we go through the year. You can change that any time during the year. George, repeat that second part again. We're taking the forty dollar copay and making it what? Twenty. I mean ten. Okay, so you're reducing it by ten, not two ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've gone to ten now. Wait, so the tier two is going from thirty to twenty. No, and forty to thirty. Or forty to thirty. And tier one is going from five to two. And that's that's where the total one is about five dollars for me. It's two and then both five. And then you drive them from the highway down to the road. Five to zero. Mm -hmm. The proof so we'll see. I mean, so are those available? Like those those Yeah, there. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know this wrong. I, I can't find my email address on that. This 320 is the basic number. And then it's got, got the cost of the cost of the rate, the cost of the uh, CTA, our, our share of the CTA rate. Yeah. This, this number here, that, that, that was the basic rate. And then there was the CTA route that we were going to pay a share of. And the Agro's paying a third, and we're paying two thirds. What does it go to? I can't they find my email. <laughs> <thing. laughs> yeah, I think it picks up about another twenty thousand. Yeah, it's like twenty-four. I'm gonna say it's gonna three. That's what I'm gonna say for now. Just for now, we'll go look it up. I just can't find my email. I have two. We got to make sure people are educated. They need to decide. Okay. And the doctor says, "Hey, this is going to cost you X amount of dollars, or you get the generic for zero. They go, "Huh? What?" Okay, uh, council members. Uh, Mr. Leonard has a couple of non-departmental okay. issues he just, wants to discuss. I just want to be clear on on this. I think I know the answer. Uh, on CTA, the basic rate for the whole year was three hundred twenty thousand. That was going to be done. If we wanted to add the new route, the Route 32, or continue the new route, which is the route that goes, the new route is going to go from, um, was it going from Mar Marvard Mar Cherry Fox, Fox all the way to Van and Quebec? Santa Maria. Santa, Santa Maria. Yeah, D'Iverville agreed to pay one third of, 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 of right. and running it five days a week, right. and uh, Monday through Friday, and we were going to pay two thirds. And that changes that number from 320 to 344 for the year. So the increase is about 20,000. Right. That route. Right. Did you okay. Say that so. CTA? So. CTA would be 280. Did you say? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was 280 or 290. 320 was the basic number. I'll, I'll I'll go back and look at my emails, but that, that's what I've got in my notes. 320 was the basic number for the regular route, and then this was for the addition. No. The 36,000 is the help. We give CTA 280. Right, I think he said, I think Kevin Cogg sent me some numbers, and the additional route put it over the 300,000 mark. That's, and I can go back and mm -hmm. from Kevin, but I think that was the case. I think it was 280 plus the 22 okay. for the new route, which was our responsibility, not uh, the actual like 111,000 responsibility built into their budget. Well, if, if I can get consensus, regardless of what the number is, that what, that what we agree to pay is the base number plus two thirds of the increased other route. Do y'all know what we paid last year? I thought it was 318. That would be the 37.5 and the 282 or 280 that we paid to them. I think it was 282. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 318. I'm pretty sure 318 was the, the full amount from last year. That was the final number after we added the 37.5 mm -hmm. to add the Pops Ferry route. Okay. Before that, we were at 280 okay. or 281. Yeah, 318, 
I'll get the number right if I just as long as I understand what you all want me to do. If you all are in agreement that we pay whatever that quote is for their base amount plus two thirds of the new route, for, and it's for six months for five days a week. But they did ask for an increase outside of that route mm -hmm. this year as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't agree to an increase of the base, just the increase of what the Fox Ferry route cost us, that portion. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, right. I think you have, I think you have. I mean, they increased the base because their, their costs went up, but. Well, I think we have consensus that we're going to support adding the 22 to the new Okay, route. all right. But if, but, but if you cut the base, then depending on how many times you're going to increase the base, and their cost will increase from 68, we'll not be looking at it all, man. Trick my route, so get rid of the route. Okay, the, the other non I, I know what to deal with. I know what, I think I have the consensus on that. I just got to double check the numbers and make sure the numbers are right. The other one is the library. Remember the, the original library ask was 720, uh, 728, I don't know, whatever it is. And that was for the uh, computers plus the, you know, um, we put 695 in, which was last year's and the year before and the year before his number. So there was some there was some discussion about what about giving them some some increase for the computers. system or whatever's changing but I've had computers that I've kept the same operating system on after everything else is upgraded I mean your computer just won't work anymore or? Say the, up, the updated version of Microsoft Word. Have you went up on any of the fees to use the computers or?
How about the Biloxi Harrison County Library? That has a good ring to it. We give, we give $22 million to the county. Mm. 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 The proposal is that we give them a hmm? little bit more. Do you operate a library in the uh, Iberville? How much does the Iberville give? What do you say, Mr. Jimmy? All right, so, all right, thank you, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Tisdale is proposing another 12 grand for the library, Mr. Deming. to make a decision so all right one two three there's yeah Felix would support it so you got the four votes um, okay those are the two non departments that I was concerned about that I knew that I needed a decision I, I don't think there's anything to talk, more to talk about on capital projects. We have the list. The list is the list. If anybody wants me to add any proposed projects to that second page, just email me. I'll add them in. It's all a feel-good deal. It, it doesn't mean anything until we have the bond. All right. So here's the deal. Do, are we? Is it necessary to recess this meeting till tomorrow, or do we have a budget that we're ready to adopt on Friday? <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Go ahead. The cap. Uh, oh, all right. For, for the record, this is where we are. There is a resolution on your next meeting agenda asking the council for permission for the administration to develop and submit a change to the legislation which would allow us to remove the cap. That's the next step. You have to make you have an increase with them in there too? You said two points. Two well, we don't know if we, a, a. First, the legislators have to adopt it. We don't know. We're just, they're just going to move it. Move it, move it, will, it will be six months to a year yeah, before that happens. Yeah, that'll be next, next I mean, session. Actually, they're not even in session now. Right. Local problem. Local session until next April. April. Yeah. But this needs to be approved because you've got three months before it's going to affect the last three months. Well, it, September. It, yeah. 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 
but it will. It, that thing ends in June. So you got July, August, September sitting there. That's the idea of the stock. It only affects those last three months. Well, you know, we don't even know if it's going to be approved. Yeah. It'll be approved. They don't have to turn anything down. Their job is just to do what we It's a problem. It's not new. You have to go to that system. Yeah. If I got the question when it's approved, then you give it to the school. Well, we, and they, and they, and they but couldn't we do a budget amendment if we needed to, if it was yeah, necessary? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a couple of options we'll have. We'll have either a budget amendment to address that and move into the cap, or we don't even implement, implement that until so, the next so the new year, fiscal year. It's a couple more months. So there's a couple ways we can handle that, but we can handle that then. We don't have to handle it now. I think, I think it needs to be but you will, but, needs but, to be but, change. And after we remove the cap, it should never be right. anyway. First thing you need is four votes to approve for doing the legislation at all. And we're going to so take we'll that up on Friday. Friday. That's right. going to be on Friday. So okay. I don't know anybody's having a problem with that. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> we're not going to vote against that. I think we put in the charge and we all can do this. My thing right. is it has to be passed because you got to cover three months. Mm -hmm. But we can always do that at any time. We can always say we need a budget amendment to fund this pending the leg or after the it gets passed. Once the legislation is passed, Once they approve then, we, then we have the choice to, to adjust right. it. Any other discussion on the cap? Mr. Lawrence, you got any other comments on the cap? Okay. okay. All right. We've been here a long time today. Uh, I'm still going to ask the question are we, are we ready to adopt this budget on Friday, or do we need a recess for a meeting tomorrow? May, I, I, will, I will make all the changes in the four documents. There were the four documents that are the exhibits the combined fund statement, the revenue statement, the, the uh, department and and the capital project list and i will email those or, or put hard copies in each of your boxes by this time tomorrow can i make one suggestion i know you call it a feel good list but i think it's gonna it carries a connotation of expectation and there might be more issues than it's worth and we can address capital projects throughout the year but adding adding a capital project list as an attachment to the budget without any numbers on it mm -hmm. i think that's a, a fool's errand it's going to be a bigger burden to us publicly than it than it's going to be worth when that that project list we, is still part of it and we can we can address every one of those projects as we move but attaching it in the, in the budget i don't have to out. I don't have to. This is this is all you really need to put in the budget. Okay, I agree. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out. So I'll just so those four exhibits, you'll have them by this time tomorrow. Okay. And I think if anybody has any objection, you know. Um, well, I'm just saying, Friday. What happens Friday if we can't come to an agreement to adopt the budget? What actually officially happens? We we meet Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We Motion to no. We have till the fifteenth. No, no, not yet. I've I've asked I've asked the question twice already. Or you, if I may, if I make a mistake with well, what you think it is, email me and copy the right. council president. And if he says no, no, you, you, you have it wrong, I'll make the adjustment. All right, Mr. Lawrence has a couple of things he wants to bring up. This is something I thought a long time ago. This is the chart. This is the chart. This is the chart that we should keep. There's another guy in the book that changed. This chart is the correct way to say he's wrong. That chart's not yeah, right. Yes, it is. <laughs> Who? The planning commission. The legal. The thing we do legally go to up. This is why it's there. All it does is that's what you want to replace this with that. Yeah, that okay. Yeah. We we have a copy of that somewhere? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. The other thing, this is my accusation 
is the only refiner of this crew. The main crew thing we run in that uh, nonprofit, those people work for six bucks. Okay, you can't do that. You can't run that as a nonprofit through the mayor's office. So they work for that. So you need to but then they're, they're not going to be voting. I mean, it's they're opinion. Not they they buy out. They all that. They all work for the main crew. You, you can't do that. You can't run a nonprofit back to the mayor. Yeah. All right. We'll check into it. We'll check into it. We'll check into it. Mayor, you want to have a comment or you want Peter to check into it? And get no, back Peter, to it? Peter has checked in as, as far as the organization of Main Street and some of the functions they want to do. They can't be a voting member of that uh, Main Street. Okay. But they can't be a board by the city. Those people are employed by the city. And they do a great job, both of them. I don't want to lose them in city of Well, they, okay, they, they won't be officially part of that 501c3 operation called Main they, Street. They, 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 they run out of the You have to look into that. You can't do that. All right. So you, you want to charge legal to look into it and get a, get a clarification. Okay. We'll look into it. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So do we have a consensus again? I heard Mr. Deming say he's okay as he, he understands it. Any? Okay. All right. You okay as as it as you understand it? The, the reason I'm asking if everybody's okay, I gotta determine if we need another meeting before Friday. That's the only reason. All right. What's Friday's date? 14th. It's the deadline for us to vote on the budget, so we got only got a couple more days if we're if we're. So we're either going to adjourn or recess. So, anybody else? All right. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. Deming. Second. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> all right. Good job.